All right, welcome to another live stream. Wizard Foo here, and I'm going to be doing some live game development. Um, just checking on things. It's been a minute since I've been streaming. I've been traveling in places that I can't really get good internet, despite having 4G and paying for my $100 a month Verizon phone, having the best coverage apparently in the United States. Sometimes it still is not good enough. Um, but I happen to have found a sweet spot right here, so hopefully I can get some great streams in at this spot whenever I'm here. Um, also, I think I'm going to be doing, um, I might do some co-working here. In, I'm in San Francisco at the moment. I've found a really cool place to do some co-working. I think I can get some live streams done there, and they have great internet. So I um, won't have to worry too much about that. Maybe I could even increase the quality of this stream for finally. Yeah. So, uh, man, lots of progress been made on the voxel engine so far. Let's take a look at things and see how they've been going, yeah? And we'll start jumping into making a few improvements here and there. Uh, I want to start with making, like, the shadows better, for example. Let's look, let's look at what we got going here. And hopefully we've got no issues with the stream. I think this is a pretty sweet spot as far as how kind of a data rate I'm getting um, wow I'm just comparing versus Songbringer Songbringer I used to be able to stream at 30 frames a second and still be able to not have the fan on this old laptop turn on so this engine is a bit more intensive. There's stuff going on in the CPU and the GPU that has to be done. So I'm I'm hearing the fan noise from my laptop right now, and you probably are too, watching this on YouTube or whether you're watching on the live stream here. You can hear a little bit of the fan noise from my computer, which means the GPU, probably the GPU, is the thing that's working a little bit too hard here. If I stand still, it's not going to use as much of the systems. But still, yeah, we're definitely getting some uh, some GP, some, yeah, it's just not yet as efficient as Songbringer was. But at least we have this cool looking 3D engine, right? And it can rotate the voxels around and we have, you know, can rotate the perspective. That's super neat. That's going to be a, that's going to be a fun thing to have in this, in this game. So let's take a look at my, uh stats here and see if there's anything going that shouldn't be or some reason why it's not as efficient as it should be why is activity monitor i think it's just because i just started that up yeah it's just game show using a lot of the cpu i think game show is supposed to use less so maybe it's not my game's fault maybe it's just the game show streaming software Hmm. Well, nobody's in the chat room yet, so we'll start diving in and doing some improvements to the engine. One thing I wanted to do is make the shadows flicker. So we'll do that. So if I'm standing right here, the player has two shadows. Um, there's a shadow that's being that's that's the upper one. And then there's a shower shadow, which is kind of the lower one. You can see that lower one moves with, as we move around this firelight, it moves around um, in a, you know, circular fashion or oval-like fashion. That uh, that particular shadow, I'd like it to flicker. So there's currently a flicker going on. If I stand right about here, you can see that the highlight on the player is flickering. So that that flickering animation right there is. Uh, is being applied, but I want that that same those same flicker values to apply to the length of the shadow coming out of um, Or maybe even just the intensity of the shadow coming off of uh, that fire. So let's start with that um, no, I'm not using that one anymore I was writing a script earlier today to do some gifs. Hopefully do some gifs easier time-lapse gifs. Okay, um we set up the shadows. We've got apply lights. That's one of the methods. No, animate lights. Okay. 
Yeah, that's where it sets up the percentage of the light. Oh! Nope, that does use the rand of the flicker scale right there. Oh, maybe it's just not being applied in the uniforms. No, that's going to be in the shadow. Hmm, wait a minute. So, where does the shadow actually apply? Oh, it cast the shadow in voxel. Voxel's paint method. Here's where we're casting a shadow. Right here. Preparing casts. Oh, and the prepare cast itself loops over lights. Hey, blood! Howdy! What's up, brother? How you doing, man? Long time no chat. You're great. Good to hear. Same here as well. I'm doing great. I just had GDC last week. That was super fun. Yeah, life's great, man. Yeah, life's been really, really good. Um, I'm still uh, living and traveling in this van. I'm in a van right now. I'm not sure if you can tell. Um, but my van's getting slowly better. Every month I get one more little improvement. Uh, the latest thing I've got in my van is heat. <laughs> That's super cool to have heat. Like, especially this winter, man, it was cold. Really, really cold, snowy, snowy days this winter. And it really motivated me to get some heat here. So now I have heat. It's actually a radiant floor. Um, so water is pumped around my floor to heat things up in here. Um, I've got a fridge. i got, like, a sink and... You know, all the batteries and electrical stuff I need to run my computer. Uh, but, you know, some of the things on next on my project are to do, like, water. Like, I need to put some water tanks in so I can have... Uh, right now, I just have, like, these five-gallon water tanks I'm using. And uh, it'll be great to have an actual, like, 25-gallon water tank and things like that. So, it's been great. Yeah, it is. It's pretty crazy what you can do with the van. It's great. It's uh, It's a tall one, too, so I can stand up inside. Um, you'd be able to stand up inside too. Yeah, man. It's a, uh, I love it. I love it. It's a cool, it's a cool life. Actually, it suits me pretty well. I like traveling and working. So this is, this is fun. Um, but yeah, the new, the new voxel engine here for the new game is going great. I finally broke through on a lot of, uh, the issues I had last year. Um, at the end of last year, like November, I was really working on this hard. And now all those issues are kind of falling by the way. So I had a Worked through my mall, busted through all those issues, and now, now I got a cool engine. So I'm working on just making the the shadows flicker right now. I I I don't get lonely too much because I have seen so many friends. I've been traveling and just basically living my life the way that I can see friends all the time. Like I've had a great friend reunion party I was at in March. We. So we worked for two weeks just like setting the whole thing up. So I got to hang out with friends the whole time, party with friends during it, hang out with friends afterwards. And then just this last week I was here in San Francisco for GDC. So I got to hang out with a lot of other game developers and creators. And um, I got to see my publisher and got together with them. They're, I love them. And uh, other than that, I've seen like my parents more often. I've seen my family more often. I've seen other friends I know I don't normally see because I they live, you know, like some friends live in California, some fl friends live in Oregon, and some friends living in New Mexico, and I've seen all of them. So life has been really amazing lately. I really can't say I'm lonely at all. I'm actually the opposite. I have like too many friends. They're they're all right here. These friends are right here with me right now. <laughs> yeah, life's good though, man. Um, what's new with you, man? How's everything? Oh, there. 
Okay. I just need to do this. This is uh, making the shadow a little bit different depending on the... Uh, if it's a highlight, now let's do the same thing, but let's do it with um, shadows. Yeah, man. Life's good. My grandpa used to say, life's good. I can't complain. Wouldn't do any good if I did. I miss that guy. He's a good guy. Okay, let's see if that's those shadows flicker now. Yeah, nice. Cool, we've got flickering shadows. That's great, that's exactly what I wanted. Why don't they seem to be flickering? Oh, I know what it is. They're not, okay, so we're not actually flickering this, we're not actually redrawing an entity. Like the shadow doesn't flicker until the entities around it are redrawn. Hmm. Yeah, yeah. Let me run that again. Try, I want to take a look at this. So what's happening here is uh, is the shadows are flickering, but they're not actually redrawing the shadow enough because they're, it's only redrawing those shadows for the player when you stand over here every time the player's animation changes. That only happens once every half second. So it's a long time between frames where the player's just like shrugging his shoulders a little bit. That's when his animation changes and that's when it redraws the shadow. So that's why we're not seeing a lot of flicker going on right here. But because if we stand over here, we're actually in the same, we're being covered up. I think it's because we're being covered up by that. That's why the, the shadow is flickering well here. Hmm. Okay, so what would need to be done to get the shadows to flicker? Oh, I guess we would need to say if the... I guess we would just need to paint, repaint the entity. Yeah, so this is actually not too hard. If we go to render system, and when we're ticking the 3D entity, oh, this is actually this one, tick 3D entity. Yeah, all right, cool, man. Thanks for dropping in. It was always great to chat with you. Look forward to doing it again sometime, brother. Catch you later. Okay, um, so all we need to do here is if we're close enough to a light and that is flickering and the character has the cast shadows attribute then and we don't have a paint if it doesn't need a paint already then we add the paint flag so add paint flag if close enough to a flickering light all right so if e dot render dot flags dot has c render cast shadows uh, Sometimes, sometimes that doesn't have a complete list of all the render flags types. Yeah, it's just, just cast shadows. Why didn't that pop up? Sometimes it just doesn't pop up. I don't know why. Okay, if we're close to, if we have cast shadows and... We do not have 
Render needs paint. We're going to loop over all the lights. And if the light has a cast shadows flag, forget that one too. Um, oh, it's light C cast or light C flicker. Oh, sorry, light. See flicker. There we go. We have flicker and the distance. Let's, let's set up a distance uh, here. Oh, wait. Let's do it here, actually. Const mm, float max dist squared equals math squared f. Yo, what's Alessandro? What's up, brother? Hey, man. Thanks for kicking me in the pants. I got the I got your message on Facebook. You're like, why? Am, where are you? Why have you been streaming? And I found a place to stream today that it's amazing. It has great, great 4G internet here. Yeah, you're great. Good to hear. Oh, yeah. Just working on the game here. Check it out. Check it out how, how far the engine's coming along here. This voxel engine I'm pretty proud of. It's looking good. It's looking pretty close to how Songbringer was, but boom, it's 3D. Oh, I just saw some pink pixels there. The ground was showing through. But yeah, so this is it so far. You know, there's no sound effects or anything. I've just been working purely on the voxels for a while. A little bit of gameplay is done, uh, but um, gameplay is going to be next month, so this month I'm just finishing up any more voxel improvements I can do for now. So this is where it's at, and I'm excited. I like this engine. Hey. Yeah, right? It's good progress, right? It's really coming along. I'm happy with the results. I'm really excited to make uh, this game in this sort of 3D pixel arts, uh, you know, it's not really, it's not like it's voxel art like like Minecraft, and it's not like it's pixel art either, and it's not like it's the one of those hybrid 3D engines where they're using billboards and other entities to create 3D shadows. This is actually 3D. Every single one of those pixels is a three-dimensional voxel, actually. So it's just basically like Minecraft voxel engine, but with tiny voxels, and none of them have textures. They're just all colors, which is sweet. I really like it. And it can do dynamic colors and some other stuff like that. So I'm really excited for this engine because not only can I make this game with it, but I'm pretty sure I can use this same engine for the next game too. This is kind of my dream situation here, having three dimensional a three-dimensional world, three-dimensional rendering, and still have that two-dimensional retro pixel art look. So I really love that look. It's just, it's a very, uh, I don't know. Maybe it's nostalgia, something else. I mean, it's aesthetic too. I know I love the aesthetic of it. So, but anyways, happy with it. Very happy with it. So how far away? Oh, the light is going to have to be. Oh, this is based. The light has its own distance. We don't need to worry about this. Do I need any kind of support right now? I mean, just your your emotional friendship support is all I need. Thank you for that, as always, my brother. Yeah, it. I mean, there's not really any anything I need too much right now. You know, come come towards when it gets towards the end of the game. You know, that's when, or when, especially when it gets closer to beta, that's when I'll need support and help from everybody I can, spreading the word about it. Because this is a multiplayer game. Gonna need to. That's gonna be the thing, right? Is getting it off, getting it to actually succeed and get off the ground, and or whatever you want to call that critical mass or its momentum. It's that's that's where I need your support, and that'll be that'll be probably that when this game is gonna get to that point is probably by the end of the year. So like December, maybe January. Uh, you know, come January, about nine months from now, 
that's when that's when I'm a planning to have this game about ready for beta. It may be it may be more of like a late alpha at that point, but maybe I'll start like an early private beta and then open up the beta later to public. I'm not exactly sure how that'll all work, but probably about this December or maybe January. Um, that's when uh, it'll be about that point. So until then, it's going to be just developing this to the point where it's actually playable and fun and all that stuff, which is one of my favorite parts of a project. Okay, so if we have flicker and the distance... How about this? If we doesn't have flicker, we continue the loop. So, um, and then we do get the distance squared from the light to the entity. And it's, it's the render pause. Yeah, we want to do the render pause. So the distance squared is L dot pause minus E dot render dot pause dot length squared and we'll do yeah the length f squared the float version all right and we've got that so now we want to do if we are close enough so if the distance squared is less than the lights the light actually has its own sort of length value and we want to square that square f of l dot is it, it is distance okay l dot distance all right so there if our if the distance we measure from this light to the entity is less than the light's distance then and that has a cast shadows and this has flicker Yeah, I think that's all we need. E dot render dot flags dot set C render needs paint. Okay. So there, if we're standing next to a flickering light, we need to repaint every single tick. Let's see if that works. If it does work, we should be able to stand to the right of that flickering fire where it wasn't being covered up by, it wasn't being redrawn in normal ways. And we'll be, we should be able to see the, the light flicker from there. So we were standing about here. Oh, it's working. Yeah. Right on. We got a fully flickering light, even though no nothing else is telling us to make that shout. Even, check this out. If I get really far away, still flickering. Dude, that's so satisfying. I can't believe that worked on the first try. You can even see a, a few little... Fit, Pixels flickering there. If we go further though, now it stops. Dope! I love it! What's up, Massey? Do you actually need to sort, or is... Oh, you don't, know, you don't need to do square root if you can just measure the squares, right? This is, this is basically just a, an optimization. Oh, you're asking you're asking a more technical question here. Um, I think I think that's correct, Massey. Very interesting question. I wonder if there's somebody else in the stream that could help us answer this question. I'm not a I'm not a mathematician here, but I think that's right. If my geometry and all that basic math serves me. Correctly, it's been so many years since I learned that stuff. Oh, I'm so stoked this actually worked though. Yeah, same here. <laughs> same. Warcrite, how do you approach designing and implementing a fast rendering loop without premature optimization? Such a good question. Everyone seems to have a different way. Um, I've just uh, right it, optimization in general doesn't. It, I, I understand what you mean. It doesn't have to just be about rendering. Um, so far in this project, I have tried to be just just optimize when I need to. So I've done really, really messy code, leaving it 
performing horribly for times just to get it done, just to get it working first, right? That's the mo That's my highest priority is having it sort of mechanically or functionally work as it should, right? That's the first step because I always know I can optimize, right? Optimization is always possible. You can always improve a system um, by a certain percentage, especially from when you take it from its raw state where you just wrote it to the point where it's really refined and super optimized. There's a lot of room there. Um, and it does, maybe sometimes it doesn't seem like it, but it, it's always there. So have faith there. Um, but I, I've actually had to do, I've just basically optimized out of necessity this project. Like I've, I've run into situations where I'm like, I really have to get this game running at 60 frames a second right now so that I can actually play it. Like I can actually see it run. And so a lot of the optimizations have been that way. I've just been from need and always, you know, I, I guess like, I, you know, you didn't ask this, but if anybody else is that is wondering about optimization in general, always profile. I'm, I'm pretty much always have instruments open and I'm always profiling, like actually measuring, you know, the performance to test because you, you never want to assume things when you're optimizing. Yeah. Yeah. Good point, Massey. But as far as like, as, as far as designing, I guess designing is a little bit of a, a little bit more of an area where you have, um, you can rely on previous experience if to write yourself a fast rendering loop. Like if you've already written a few rendering engines or you have the pretty good idea how rendering engines work or you've done a certain system before and you're about to design a system that's sort of similar, you can sort of rely on designs you've used in the past in your brain and your memory and your subconscious. You can sort of, you know, approach design from that, from that perspective where you can kind of design a system that's already somewhat optimized. You know, um, but still, there's always room for improvement. And so, yeah, it's been mostly out of necessity this time. One optimization I made this weekend was to ticking the on screen. Hell, while we're on the topic of optimization, let's just kick open the profiler. I'll show you what I've, what a couple of the optimizations I've made recently. Oh, uh, well, I don't know if I, I want to market it as a non-retro game. I'm not sure, so I'm not too worried about it, that. I am worried about the name, though, and the name I have a solution for. Um, I had, don't want to announce anything just yet, but pretty soon I'm going to announce the solution for that, and that's going to be pretty exciting. I'm actually pretty stoked. I got a cool name now, basically and a little bit of a simpler game design and uh, I'll be announcing all that soon. But as far as the retro art, I'm not too worried about that. It's I think that what's more important is the gameplay, you know. That'll really get people. I think the 3D nature of this will will help too. It's not like I'm just making another 2D pixel art. This is sort of a 3D pixel art. Yeah, the name issue. You mentioned it when I announced it and I it rung inside me. That definitely resonated. I was like, dude, I need to, I need to think something up better here because this doesn't, doesn't do, doesn't do the trick, you know. You're writing your own GL render. Found the best optimization is optimized architecture from the project's root. True. Oh yeah, yeah. Thanks, Morglod. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, if you could up, if I could up the res and do it, still do it like that way. I'm not sure that you know, Massey. Technically, it might not be possible for me to achieve that goal um, right now, at least with the current hardware I have. I've when I ran it. So basically, when three months ago, when I was starting all this, I started with an actual voxels where it would draw or triangles all of the voxels were made up of like six triangles i think yeah six triangles and that i ran into a crazy limit so that's that actually made it look really cool at, at like a huge resolution but it doesn't run that fast and it was hella it was just really slow man um so i found a kind of a sweet spot here with this resolution with these tiny voxels and now i know why other games haven't done tiny voxel engines because tiny voxel engines are crazy just look Look at this little math right here. This is this is why 
making a tiny voxel engine is really difficult, right? If we have simply a 128 pixel wide drawing, right? Let's say it's 128 by 128 pixels, right? That's 128 by 128 is 16,000 pixels. But this is what's so crazy about the voxel part of it. When you go 3D, let's do one let's do one more dimension of 128 and now we're going to be at boom, 2 million. All, all of a sudden, you know you know what I mean? This is why making a tiny voxel engine is hard. Is you're dealing with huge numbers of voxels. Yeah, I already, I already, I already have simplified occlusion. Um, basically, it does that. Uh, I'll show you the code for that. It's like a, the engine has to already uh, project all the voxels, anyways. So it's it's taking every three dimensional voxel and turning it in into a two dimensional position on the screen just by multiplying by the view projection matrix. It's really simple. But it's basically just, it goes and loops over all the voxels and it tests the depth of all of them and basically just finds the voxel that's on top and occludes all the rest. It's a very simple two-dimensional voxel occlusion. And so, yeah, this is already with optimized uh, voxels. Yes, two million. Well, I guess it wouldn't be two million triangles. It would be more than that, right? If you wanted to do, um, if you wanted two million voxels, Right with that with that engine I was describing earlier, where each voxel had six triangles, this would be this many triangles, right? Twelve million triangles, and that a modern a modern computer could do that, right? A great gaming engine from two thousand and nineteen could do that easily, but my old laptop from two thousand thirteen and a ton of other players that don't have super optimal systems, right? It's not going to be fast for them, so. This is kind of a cool hybrid for me is right now is like trying to create this three-dimensional voxel engine world with pixel art style p pixels and all that. It actually makes it able to run fast. I can run this at 60 frames a second. Yeah, right. 12, and 12 million versus 2 million is definitely a huge difference. I remember this particular laptop right here could do about a million triangles um, per frame per and still achieve about 30 FPS. But once you go to just going from 1 million to 2 million triangles really killed it. So there's a huge, there's a big limitation when it's in some, some GPUs, I guess, that, you know, that you're going to hit that wall eventually. Oh, right. Voctolin, yeah. Packed with octo trees and art trees, yeah. Yeah, now that's a, that's a really great idea, right? You can do that. You can pack together your triangles, right? Your voxels. That's a great thing to do. And in fact, I could have done that with the engine I was writing, with it had all the triangles and everything. Um, but I found a really, uh, I really like this solution I've got for now, where it's just basically every single voxel translates to a single pixel, and that's why it. Um, uh, that's why it only needs to draw one pixel for an entire voxel rather than trying to draw six triangles and doing, you know, that adds a lot of overhead to the renderer and your GPU and all that. Instead of doing that, just drawing one single pixel, it really is a huge shortcut. Yeah, a strong machine would be great. Oh, I was gonna. Oh, yeah. Let's open up the the profiler. I'll show you what I'm what I'm talking about. A few things have been profiled lately. Oh, even the players' highlights are flickering better now. Okay, so if I stand right by the fire here, the highlights should be the brightest. Yeah, they're super bright. They're maybe too bright. And standing over here, they're just flickering nicely. Oh, I love this engine. Yeah, I'm really happy with how things are turning out here. I can't wait to get to the point though where I'm actually making more art. This has like really been uh, programming heavy, lots and lots of C++ and just you know optimization and getting certain features in, like the light beams and the the clouds and the three dimensional like this right here. These flame, I need to work on getting that so it's not it can be partially transparent. That's one thing. Let's open up. Let's open up the profile. Also, keep <laughs> keep forgetting to open that up and get that going.
Oh, yeah, but when you add tree base, it is, yeah, that is going to be crazy math hard. Yes, I have. So there's shaders running there. There's, uh, I got a, um, no, it's not free angle. It's, it's set to 45 degree angles. So when I'm, what I'm doing there is I'm pressing the, I'm pressing the rotate camera button once, right? I'll press it once right there and it rotates 45 degrees. I'll press it again and it rotates 45 degrees back, right? So it's not a free rotating camera. It's just 45 degree angles. And I like that because I don't, I've always, I've always kind of disliked 3D games where you can rotate the camera any angle you want because it always, I mean, it's, it works in some games where you've got like a three dimensional world and maybe you got to look up in the top left corner or maybe you got to look down there or whatever. But this is a, this is a much different kind of game where it's just a very simple thing where um, all we need is just this. You know, this is cool enough right here, 45 degree angles. So I hope it was running in. Yeah, cool. We got some we got some data here. This is gonna be crazy with with a live stream and coding going on right now at the same time. Yeah. Yeah, right. It does. It does look more impressive, right? That's kind of that's kind of why I made it that way, right? I want it's super cool to see that happen, right? And as a player, I can imagine that could be a hook for players. Like a player sees, whoa, look at that. It looks like pixel art, but he just rotated the camera. I think it'll be sweet. I think it'll be a definite hook for players. It's a hook for me. I'm like, whoa, I love that. What's going on here? So I'm not sure if this is going to really show too much great data right now because I'm running the live stream right now. So I'm encoding. And so, but anyways, out of 15 seconds, let's get the, just a 10 second window actually. It'd be a little bit easier. That's good enough. So out of about 10 seconds, Load Ragger used 6.6. .6. Yeah, exactly. Right? Yeah. Those glory shots and free camera rides. Yeah. Yeah, so there's a lot of potential, right? This is a cool feature that could be, you know, it could be used in a lot of different ways. I could make it, I could keep it the way it is where you can just rotate the camera yourself 45 degrees at a time. Or maybe the camera sort of, sort of like has its, a mind of its own. Maybe it follows the player for you. I don't know. We'll we'll see. Or maybe what there may be some points of the game where you sort of have to use rotating the camera to really to really help you get a good angle at a certain battle or maybe something like that, you know? Tick camera rotation. Oh, cuz I was rotating the camera. Where is there it is. This is the thing I was optimizing recently. It's tick on-screen ids. This takes up a lot of time whenever you're getting near the edge of the screen because it has to re-decide which entities um, are now on the screen, right? So it has to go and look through its whole list and remove old entities, add new entities and all that. So that, I've been optimizing this a lot lately, so I've gotten that to be a lot better. But the, the reason it looks okay right now, it's only using 59 milliseconds out of 10 seconds, is that... Uh, I didn't move around that much while I was just profiling right there. But had I ran towards the edge of the screen and then ran back towards the other edge of the screen, this uh, whole tick on screen ids would have been a major contributor to the performance loss. Definite, definitely there's still some room for improvement optimization wise there. And there's also some room for a lot of room for improvement in, gosh, all the 2D systems. Like look at, Health system tick is still using 800 milliseconds. That's crazy. It shouldn't be. You know, there's definitely some room to improve that. And animate to tick animate still using 1.4 seconds. Render system. That's mostly render system paint voxels, which is basically just running voxel paint, which is basically just running a texture set color and some other stuff. So, anyways, Gladiar, what's up, man? Yeah, that's right. You can go so deep with with instruments and check out, you know, how your profile is going. But usually I keep this open. But today I'm not really profiling, so we'll close this. I'm gonna close instruments. And I'm gonna close Xcode because I don't think we're gonna need those today. But check it out. The 
engine now has the what classes I have in mind, how different or same you want them. Um, you're talking cl not cl classes, like character classes, but like C++ classes. Oh yeah, characters in the game. Um, this is part of the thing that was that's changing actually. So this is the thing I was mentioning earlier, where the name's going to be better and the game is getting the game design is getting a little bit simpler. So there's actually uh, I'll tell you I'll tell you how I designed it before because that's really the there. Um, if we're talking about characters, there was the uh, man. This is all going to change. I really don't think it's there's really much to mention here ah yeah I'll let's save that conversation for next for another stream how about that it's a good question but it's it's changing so yeah we'll save that one for later yeah okay well where, where are we now? oh yeah let's check this code in so all we did was make it so that um, shadows. In fact, oh, let's before we do this, let's change it up so um, the shadows aren't quite as <laughs> cool. Cool. I'm really excited to announce that, but I've got to put a few things together first, right? I would tell you right now, and I'd be excited to do it, but there's a few things that got to be settled first. Trust me, it'll be worth it. Hopefully, it'll be worth it to you. It'll definitely be worth it to me. I'm pretty sure this will be worth it to everyone else, too. So, okay. Let's make it so the highlights aren't quite so highlighty. Okay, that's. I think that's in prepare cast. When we actually pass in the prepare cast. Yeah, yeah. So here's where we're preparing... A shadow highlight or shadow cast and here's where we're preparing a highlight cast and oh that's why because we've got it at half let's set it to maybe just a quarter so that's gonna be half the highlighting going on I think that'll be better because when, when we were standing right next to that flame that was too much highlight this maybe might be better at more like a third or 0.4 let's see how this looks Yeah, it's looking good. Okay, if we're standing right by the, the flame. Yeah, that's pretty good. And if we get a little farther away, still highlighty, but not too not too bad. Here we've just got a nice gentle highlight. Here it's even more gentle. Here it's barely even noticeable, but still it's there. There, we're not repainting anymore. Cool. I like it. There, there's a little, little bit more subtle highlights there. And the shadows still look like they're about a good a good uh, value. Thanks, Gladiator. Yeah, it's... I kind of... Um, I'm happy to have the engine this far. It's really... Uh, it's satisfying. You know, it's very satisfying to have it finally this far. I've been working on this for six months now. About six... Yeah... About seven months so this is good to have the game up and off the ground this far and there was a lot of uh, a lot of un a lot of like underlying engine work that had to be done at, in, from the first like month or two yeah I'd say the first two months I was creating kit Fu, which was like it's just basically my own game engine wrapper layer so I never really have to go and worry about creating a basic engine ever again I basically just if I ever want to use some uh, somebody else's engine or a different you know, switch to a different open source engine or use my publisher's engine or whatever. All I got to do is change out these underlying CPP files. So in the header files always say the same. So designing KitFu is a really beautiful thing. The first month or two of this project was 
was something I'd always wanted to do. I'm glad I finally did that because I can use this same platform to create all my future games. And, uh, and, I, and this engine, too, is also some long-term work because I can probably use this for the next game and the next game as well. And maybe it'll even be better by then and the next one and the next one. I can keep improving this engine. So very happy with it. Let's get this checked in. I like the way this turned out. Um, we basically just took set up um, oh we don't need that that one line of code right there that just flickers the highlight there it's the same for either one whether it's a highlight or whether it's a shadow they both kind of thrive off the same value there so now that's all this looks like, right? All we did is is lower the overall highlights and then make it so it repaints entities if they're um, within distance of a flickering light. Yeah, it's the Wiz Engine <laughs> trademark, 2019. Thanks, man. I appreciate that. Yeah, I feel like a badass. Tell me I'm slaying, slaying it. I'm slaying it. I really did slay some bugs this weekend. Man, there's some crazy bugs I got solved. Oh, around the end of summer, did compilation time become an issue at all? It kind of did. Yeah. Some, some, for some reason, whenever you're handing like these bugs, right, at the end of a project, it's like every single one of them, you're like, damn it, I have to recompile everything for that. Even though Songbringer's total compile time on my old laptop is really only about 70 seconds, so we're talking a little over a minute to recompile everything, um, it still was, you know, it happened more often than I like. That's why I created, that's another reason why I created KitFu, is because it compiles way faster, right? Because I'm not using any more of the STL. I'm not using the STL string, not using STL vector, not using STL map, all that stuff I don't use anymore. Because it kills your compilation time. Uh, yeah, right. Yeah. So um, I basically for for KitFu, I wrote my own vector class, but based it on somebody else's uh, awesome implementation of it already. Um, so it's got its own custom vector class, custom map, custom string, um, and some other things like that. Um, but other than that, it's mostly just like a wrapper around another game engine. You know, I'm using. Can use whatever engine I want, but it's a it's a nice wrapper layer. So let's commit that. We got flickering. Make uh, shadows flicker. That's all that is. Okay. The next thing I wanted to work on was particles. I don't have any particle effects yet. We have some clouds going on, and that's kind of a particle system in a way. Shoot, I guess part all these clouds are a particle system, huh? But anyways, I'd like to have some actual particles, like just little tiny little pixels, right? But they're actually three-dimensional particles. So, for example, the flames could have some sparks coming off of them. Some of the, you know, little flame entities flying up, circling around and stuff like that. And um, what else? Um, we could have rain. Rain would be a sweet particle system to see that I would love to have that working where raindrops can fall in three dimensions and like hit hit entities but anyway so let, let's get that going in particle systems snow exactly snow rain that kind of stuff I'm pretty sure I already created particles dot h copy this over from songbringer yeah, so we've got certain kinds of particles, scale, effect types. It looks like I set a lot of this up already, but I'm pretty sure this doesn't compile yet. There's definitely some issues with the compilation. Let's open up particles.cpp. Um, let's actually just get this added to KitFu. Well, I said I need, didn't need Xcode, and apparently I did. Spoke too soon. All right, let's get Kitfu.
and we'll add in particles dot cpp and h. Dark mode, you know it. I love me some dark mode. Easy on the eyes. Man, whoever whoever like started that whole movement to have like dark mode in everything, bless your soul. Oh yes, I love dark mode. Good idea. Who thought that up? Okay, so yeah, we we should be definitely be getting some errors here. Yeah, particles. Right, right, right. Okay, so now we just got to dial all this in. So we get it compiling, and then we'll figure out how. To, so basically, what we're going to be doing is making it so all the particles can kind of move. <laughs> Give me an MS DOS. Oh, that's that's a good movement. I'm so glad we moved from from you. What was, what was even before MS DOS on MSE systems? There was nothing before MS DOS. The universe began with MS DOS, and it began with version six point one four. Who sang this song? Whoever did, you're my hero. Okay, so we got, uh, let's see, we'll go like this. And that should turn, show any bugs or any errors. There we go. Okay, cool. All right. Um, we're creating the modes here in this method. The modes are basically just like little, an individual particle. Shoot, I should just call that particle. Yeah, let's do this right. I don't want to call this moat anymore. And definitely we're not going to use K mode. We should use C. Oh, that's right. I forgot Commodore had the blue screen. Commodore 64s were so awesome. I had a friend that had one. We just grew up with, uh, in my, my household, we just had MS-DOS, though. Regular old, boring old MS-DOS with Duke Nukem and, man, what other games? ZZ, I had ZZ2, oop. Um, if anybody, if any, did anyone else play ZZT? That was such a cool text mode game. What does that friend do now? Oh yeah, Civilization, Wing Commander. That's right. I had Wing Commander. Commander Keen, I had Commander Keen. Oh, of course, like um Duke Nukem. Doom. Of course those. Wolfenstein. I know, right? <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, man, those are the days. You had to like, hack your whole, your whole computer just to get your game to run. Or hopefully the game developers did it for you. I know, right? And the patience it required for some of those games to put in, like, five floppy disks... Like back when there was like only, you know, games only came on floppy disks. What a game would I have? I had this one game that was like 14 floppy disks. It was called Dark something. Dark, um, shoot. Yeah. Yep. 
Dark Empire? No, no, Dark Darklands. It's called Darklands. Has anyone ever ever played Darklands? I love that game. It's a good game. You could you could build up like this reputation. But seriously, it came on 14 floppy disks. Nithric is darker. Yeah, that's right. Darklands was awesome. Bam. Wait, what? Is there a new Darklands? Nuh uh. Is this the old Darklands? This is the old Darklands. But it's on Steam now. Cool. I support this. Wow. I. Yeah, the original version. Is so. Is this? Wait. Is this really the the fully original version though? Sweet. Gaga's. Over it really is. My stream got a crazy lag. Let's check out. Is it might be my fault. I am streaming on 4G, and I'm working on that where I can actually stream from a good Wi-Fi connection. We'll see what this is. Is there anything wrong here? We have dropped a few frames. About a thousand so far. But it's solid green. Oh, so it's the, is it like Twitch's end, like a delay type thing? It's, oh, it's good on your end. Okay. You're all the way across the pond. All the way in Europe. So that's a good sign if, you, if you're at least having a good connection. Hmm. I don't know. I don't know. Twitch, I'm pretty sure I got all the all the check boxes to make it fast as fast as it can go. Oh yeah, it's probably that. The whole computer's like, ah, I can't take it anymore. I do plan to get a new laptop. I gotta do that. But it's sometimes it's hard to not get sometimes it's hard because I just wanna I wanna keep developing on my old laptop because I want it to be want this game to perform well. I'm like, if I play it on the old laptop and it runs fast there, then it's got to run fast on the latest hardware. Cache line optimizations? Oh, yeah, yeah. Is this like, uh, are you talking about like, uh, like L1, L2 cache, CPU cache type optimizations? Let's check out some of this information right now. I've been meaning to do this. Memory layout. Right. I did, you know, Morglod, I did do one thing which I think is a cache line optimization, but I'm not sure. Let's see if it let's see if it is. Oh, this is a great question here too. Is there a way to profile code to see if there's your poor cache use is slowing things down? Okay, keep your data small if possible. Keep things that will be accessed together or right after another next to each other in memory. So yes, I'm pretty sure I made a huge optimization to my entity component system. So my entity component system actually keeps every single one of the components for a certain entity right in a contiguous bit of memory. And I'll show you how that works in a second. Uh, learn about your compiler's optimization parameters. Okay. Oh, my light just went out. Oh, I had a cool light for most of the stream, but now it's dead. <laughs> now it's dead. <laughs> Right, anything you can do to make it. What every programmer should know about memory. Oh, uh, wow. It might be kind of lengthy, but. This is the one that I'm I'm totally understand right here, is keeping things next to each other in memory. Hmm. Ultimate, yeah, this is crazy, huh?
Huh. It's well, it's, it's actually it's the entities and the components. So one one entity has all of its stuff in a contiguous region of memory, right? Like it has its position component, its move component, its collision component. Every single one of those is right next to each other in memory. And then the next entity, and that, that's entity one. Entity two is right after that. I'll show you. Yeah. So this is actually kind of cool. This is something I added to. So there's entity foo, which is my entity component system, which is on GitHub if you want it, if you want it. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, right. The most often used fields at the top of structures. Okay. I got you there. So entity.cpp has its own cache. Where is that again? It's not ends. Did I actually move this to entity foo? Oh. Okay, there's entity foo inline, right? And this I had to. Oh, right, I created this method called entity alloc component. Oh, right, so it's an entity.cpp. So basically, this is what happens when I call add component, right? So whenever we're creating an entity, this is kind of the basic structure, right? First, it creates the EID, which is just the, the ID for that entity. There's no memory allocated at that point. Um, but then it adds each one of the components. If it has the uh, position component in its data for it, when it queries it, it'll create a position component. If it has a render, it creates a render component, blah, 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 blah. It creates all these kinds of components, right? All of them are in contiguous memory because of this. When it goes and calls that method add component, it's basically just calling a lock component. And um, a lock component, let's see this one out here. And this where it, yeah, here's where it is. It uses this entity data buffer, right? Entity data is a static character array, which is basically just a buffer, right? And if it's null, we go ahead and create it based on the max number of entities and assuming that every entity is about a, th about a kilobyte, right? A lot of entities are smaller, some entities are way bigger, but it evens out where this is a pretty good amount of memory to, to locate, right? So, and then it just basically keeps track of the data size and then it's got the data, basically it's just a buffer right here, right? And every time we allocate a new component, it takes a chunk of that memory and then uses the placement new. This is the placement new operator. Basically, this is just the same as the new operator, except that it you pass in your own memory address. So it doesn't have to locate any memory. It just is basically calling the constructor for that component on the memory that you give it. So that's how it keeps all of the entities um, and their components all in one contiguous block of memory and it's sequential. So entity one is right up right before entity two, three, etc. Right, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. ECS is the best arch architecture for game engines. It works really well. Yeah. Yeah, it's a isn't it a great way to represent objects? The ECS, it's a super go, cool tool. So let's close that. I'll close this. Let's get back to working on particles. Particles a little bit, a little bit here and there. See none. See fade. Look for K none. K fade. Oh yeah, it probably does, huh? That's another reason to upgrade laptops. Gotta do that. Upgrade computers, I mean. 
yeah. I'm, I always do that with pretty much all my projects, though. I'm always kind of sticking with an older laptop for as long as I can, just so that I make sure my games perform really well. Because I like games that perform well. It really impresses me when I play an awesome game, and it doesn't even make my CPU fan turn on at all. You know, like Celeste. Celeste is one of the games I've been playing recently that's so good, and it's really it performs so well. I've never heard my fans lap my laptop's fan turn on at all for the CPU or the GPU when I've been playing Celeste. And it's also a kick-ass game. Okay, so we got that so far. Back where you're, create mo oh yeah let's rename the the moats yeah I agree right the only bad thing is that for things like this where I'm trying to live stream you know it's eating up so much of my CPU just encoding that uh, yeah I almost need like a second laptop just for streaming right that can encode the streams or maybe I just get an, a newer laptop that can handle both at the same time. <laughs> really? What what did you unplug one of your two GPU fans for? Uh moats, 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 moats. Cool, now we got them all called particles instead of modes. I think that's a little bit clearer. Oh, the one fan was noisy. That's actually a really good reason. Just record your screen with the phone. <laughs> oh, I like it. Okay, renaming this moat structure to particle. <laughs> yeah. Be like, damn, I just fried my oh, I just fried my GPU. Damn it. Okay. Now let's get these some of these errors handled here. Create particles. This get anchor point. Right. So we want to get, we just, we don't need to get rid of this reference. I think this should work. Particles, get anchor point. Yeah, particles. Hmm, I think this will work. You wonder? <laughs> don't try it, Massey. Do not be tempted to try it. Oh, tile width. What did I use tile width? So I'm pulling a lot of this code from Songbringer, so that's why... I, some of this stuff doesn't make sense anymore in this game engine. Oh, the density was based on the tile width. It's kind of a weird way to do it anyways.
cool. Let's just comment all this out. Stars total equals density. If that otherwise we got total equals C left of max width or 1.0. Hmm. Inverse tile width. That was just like one one sixteenth really is up. Let's do it like that, yeah. Save div is now called math divide f. Do we not have math? Oh, we need math. It's one of the most important things. Mathematics. There we go. Cool. So that's math divide f. And uh, this is now math max. It's another bit of kit foo here. The math. Let's open up math.h. So that is math.h, it's part of kid foo. Got some of your more general mathematical functions you're gonna need for game development. All right, so we get, let's get that error shown again. There we go. This is math clamp I. So total particles can't be any more than 4,000. Blend funk, what is blend funk? I, I commented out blend funk. YouTube needs a dislike all recommended button. I, every time you're just trying to watch a single gardening video, turns into a whole afternoon of gardening videos. You gotta admit, they do their job well, don't they? Why did I use deterministic rand here? Oh, I think I was just trying not to use DRANDs. This is zero, this is zero to one type stuff. So let's go ahead and just, uh, let's just use rand for now. Rand, DRAND, F, O, one. Get bounds, what's that? Oh, right. You don't need, probably don't need set triangles anymore, but we probably need to get bounds. Let's turn that back on. Yeah, cool. We can get bounds now. That's good. M dot color apply tone. That's just m dot color times equals 0.5 now. Now the color is a class. Oh no, it's min tone times half. Oh yeah, right. I know, yeah. Yeah. Hopefully in another 10 years they'll get that figured out. Yeah. It's like like they're going off based on your current interest of the moment. Yeah. Yep. It happens to us all too. What happened to me the other day too? I can't I'm trying to think of what it was. Like I watched like one video of this and all of a sudden it's like you don't you want to watch this or this and this too? Forget. Forget what it was. Yeah.
Yeah. Gosh, how is that how is that changing our society, you know? This whole Netflix model. It's changing a lot, man. It's not just Netflix. It's our our social interactions, but also our games. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, right. Um, but dude, our games are turning into that. I mean, it, it's not going to be too far away where games are going to be trying to go off the Netflix model. So you pay some subscription fee and you get access to playing all these games and uh, it's going to change game development, dude. It's going to change the gaming industry. It's happening already. <laughs> you have to watch the entire season all night. You lose your job because you've been watching Netflix. Dude, it's true, right? Their whole goal, Netflix's goal, is for you to lose your job watching their 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 television all day. Oh, yeah. That's a good point. But, I mean, WoW, WoW is just one game that you pay a subscription for. I'm talking about you paying a certain subscription fee and you get to play, you get to play thousands of games for that same 10 bucks a month. Or 20 bucks a month or whatever. <laughs> Good point. Good point. What am I worried about? Jeez. Okay. So... The old particles I was pulling from Songbringer used a triangle system. Um, we're not going to need that at all because we're going to use Voxel Engine. So all we need is just to make each one of these particles in the particle system you use a Voxel. We shouldn't need the area pause. That was Songbringer only. Color. Color black. Pause, all back. Let's make those V3s. Buffer count. We don't have any more bus. Of, oh, whoa. This is updating the particle. Right. We don't. Oh, part of this we don't need. So we don't need anything where it's actually changing the triangles, like this stuff right here. This whole little section of code we don't need anymore. All right, and uh, probably not gonna need some other stuff too. Don't need the cursor. Kind equals rain, vec, get angle. Oh, I've got this. Particle zero dot vec. Float, um, I thought I had this in V3 to be able to get an angle. Oh, it's angle X, Y. Or angle X, Y degrees. So yeah, we just need angle X, Y right there. And this is going to be math clamp F. And mix F, I think I got a mix F. Yeah, math mix F. Cool. Let's change all those references to mix F. Cool. 
All right, we're getting close to having these particles compiling at least. So after I get this all compiling, the next step will be turning it into a three-dimensional. This is this is all two-dimensional. We need to make this all three-dimensional and then make it draw using the voxel engine. So I'm probably not going to be able to finish this on today's live stream, but we'll make some progress and we'll have we'll be one step closer to having particles finished. It'll be neat to see the the uh, fire, that flickering torch of flame there in, the, in this one scene that I'm working on. It'll be neat to see some actual particles floating off of that. It'll definitely add a little bit of visual, uh, you know, visual candy, eye candy. That's the word, the phrase. Yeah. <laughs> I know you saw that, right? I was like, should I change this? Yeah, I'll change it because I'll probably un end up uncommenting that at some point or, you know, you feel me? Oh, Ripple. Oh yeah, Ripples. I forgot Songbringer had, Songbringer had its own special way to ripple two-dimensional stuff. Oh, no, no, that was just adding a, yeah, that was a really simple system. That was just adding on um, a ripple animation. What's that? Yeah. Okay, K tile. Oh, these are all about tiles. Oh, that's right. Rain had all of its own special logic. Depend because it would rain would be totally different if it landed on a. Um. Like for example, if it landed on the grass, it would just bounce maybe. But if it landed on water, it would cause a ripple. So there's all this special stuff that rain did, but none of this will apply to this game engine yet. There'll definitely be points where I'm like, oh, sweet, we got it to that point, so now the, the game engine, we can do this, but it was always one pixel, so we can just make that. I don't need to do that anymore. Blocks, get, area pod, blah, 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 ripple, effect timer. Let's just comment out anything that we, we can't do yet. Did I do that for V4? V4, which is a very simple class with the XYZW floating point. Good, I did set and clear. Those are the basics, right? So we clear that. So we don't need all these right now, but it'd be fun to leave a couple of them in. So we'll leave the flatten effect. So when a raindrop hits the ground, it, it goes boop and flattens out. Or there's the bounce. So a raindrop hits the ground and bounces when it hits the ground. Um, Cool, we can still mix colors. Oh my god, are we actually able to compile this? No, build failed. Where do we fail at? Gosh, ever since Xcode 9 or 10 or something like that, it's never quite shown me the right, right errors on the command line. Oh, operator new, really? That's an easy enough one. Include new.
Sweet. It compiled. Yeah. So I can run it and nothing is going to be any different. But what would it take to get this sort of running really fast? Like, if I just wanted to see a couple different particles flickering, what would it take? Do I have, can I do that fast or is that going to take a long time? Good game, good game. What time is it here? It's 4.30. Hmm. Okay, let's see what I can get done in the next, like, five to ten minutes. Maybe I can actually get this sort of going, right? So what we need to do is we need to create a particle system. That's not too bad. All right, let's go to systems. Um, right where we're creating the fire. Let's also create create a particle system. We need to include particles. So we can even do that. Particle per particles. I want to insert the, <laughs> that was really hard to insert the letter I there. All right, particles equals new particles. Now, uh, the most simple thing we need to do here is view parent, um, add child. Particles. Um, well, we need to set up like a bunch of values like particles dot, uh, I mean, that, fade duration, like every, every one of these things is going to need a, this is the five minute test, how fast can you try and get an old system running, huh, Let's see if we can get this old system running in the next like five minutes, I've created some particles, uh, I've not really set up any of their values yet, but maybe this will actually work, I don't know. It's not going to work. This isn't going to do anything. It's not even drawing to the voxel engine yet. But it hasn't broken anything. Everything is still functional. Yay for that. Okay. Let's go um what's next? Let's let's see if we can get the, this I just want to see a couple different yellow like orange colored flaming particles. Oh, I haven't even set the position, have I? Dude. Particles set position. Pause. Plus a bit. The fire is up at 29. Let's put it up at 45. So above the flame, quite that's quite a bit above the flame. Um. Oh, I guess I could just pull the data from um. from the flame entity from Songbringer. So let's get in there. I think it's zero light, which I think is in uh, entities. Wow, I'm impressed with my own memory. Usually it's not so good. I smoke a lot of weed. I wrote this code a couple years ago. Happen to remember which one it was. Okay, flicker. There we go. Yeah, yeah. Render oval. No, that's not it. Render. How many particles? Oh, there they are. Here they are. Okay, so that data right there should be enough. We can sort of. Oops. Right. Kind equals smoke. So I'll need to actually make this all load from data because this is just a horrible way to do it, hard coding. 
uh, so much more flexible to load it from data because then you can just change the data and not have to recompile your game. Um, so anyways, this is not an optimal system, but just to get to try and try and get this running in the next five minutes, let's proceed like this. So particles, C smoke, C kind smoke, that's it. Okay, we got that set. Now particles size. No, what is it? It's not size. What's it go? Oops. I want that back open. Systems. Particles, particles. What's that size attribute called? Kind vec width. Oh, it's width height. That's right. Okay, so width equals 15. Height is 42. Vec. So we want, okay, so the vector was 0, 1, that was in two dimensions though. This is going to be now a 3D system. So we want it to be uh, 0, 0, 1. So 0, X is this way, Y is this way into the screen, and Z is up. So that's why we want 0, 0, 1. We want those, these particles to float upwards, straight up from the flame. Particles speed equals 0 0.3. Particles density, 1.5. Particles fade duration, 1.f. Scale. Oh, it's actually called particle scale. Oh, that makes sense. Because it already had a scale variable. Um, all right. Opacity, that's right, it would flicker from three different values. Min opacity, so min opacity equals 255. Mid opacity also 255. Max opacity 0 0.078. These are colors, so um, min color equals, and luckily my color class has um, an operator equals that we can translate, or actually a constructor that can construct from a, an unsigned int like that. Oh, these should all be like this though. I now use full 32-bit colors with alpha always embedded in this game engine. So max color is going to be that. There we go. We got all that set up. And let's do this too. Particles, I think we need to call create modes, maybe? Oh, shoot. Maybe not. What do we call in? How does it call create modes or create create particles? It's a, oh, it's a private method now, huh? That's right. So where would we need to set this up? Uh, on enter, it would create itself in on enter. Uh, does. Can I do that right now? Do nodes have an so this is part this is part of kit foo here where I'm basically creating a wrapper around a game engine. So I'm basically I've I've kind of set up my game engine to use headers that are similar to Coco's 2D where everything's kind of a node. So does the did I set up on enter? No, I didn't call on enter. There's no way to do the on enter yet. So there's, I, I didn't necessarily need to do this sort of creation of particles inside and on enter. It could be, oh, it also scheduled its own update. Uh, 
quickest thing I could do. Oh, yeah, okay. This is super janky, but I'm going to basically pull out this uh, create particles and make it a public method. And I'm going to go, um, oh, can I update a particle? Yep, it's got a float update. Okay. Particles, so systems. Um, oh, let's do this. Let's, get, let's make, uh, this is the janky part right here. Um, I'm going to save a static pointer to particles. And then we set it up here when we're creating the tree. And then when we go to animate all, this is right here in systems as well, we can go animate all the systems, but then also run the particle system. <laughs> This is, this is super janky. Don't do not do this at home, kids. Particles update. Duh. I don't have tick delta here. All right, we got, we are updating them. We also need to create them. Um, Create particles. Okay, there's no way in hell that's gonna work. <laughs> Don't try this at home. Oh, I'm still not even doing the visual part. Okay, I'm still not even doing the voxel engine, but I've used up my time already. Let's just see if this will actually co still compile and run. And then secondly, we'll try and see, we'll step into the create particles method and see if it's creating those particles correctly. Okay, cool. We haven't we haven't crashed the game or anything. Nothing's going wrong. That's good. I think it's really it's all it's missing now at this point is just um, the translation of a whoa translating the particles two dimensional positions into three D now and then drawing them with the voxel engine. That's really should all that's all that's left. Set a break point here. We'll just step into this method, see if it's all good, and that's gonna be it for this stream. I think I finally did a two hour stream. It's been a while since I've done a good, good, nice long stream. I'm glad. I'm, I'm super glad to have this, found this spot. I found a really dope spot, which seems to have really good 4G internet, so I can stream from my van. I'm liking this spot a lot. And also have a cool light during the first half of this stream. I had a light going. Another thing I want to do for my streams is get it so I can like do press some button and it does some cool effect that you guys can see and I can see too. Where it's like it's party time and like it's it says it, let's party on the screen. <laughs> yeah, thanks, man. Pleasure to stream. Yeah, I'm streaming from my van. Yeah, yeah. This I'm in a I'm in. I don't know if you can see really much what's gone, but. This is my van. You maybe you can see the front. You see my front seats? I don't know if you can see that. But yeah. This is my van. I live here. I stream here. I travel around in this van and concurrently in San Francisco. Uh, but yeah, I'm hopefully I can get some better live streams going from an actual co-working spot which has great internet. So I'll be I'll be trying out some live streams from this super cool co-working spot I found in San Francisco. I'll be here for a few months, so so check it out. We've created the particles, right? We've got them populated with their kind, vector, width, height, speed. All those are the values we set. That's looking good. Okay. So now we're going to go ahead and create the particles. This is all working too. Check it out. Total equals the CLF of all that stuff. So how many particles are we going to try and create here? Total is... Six. We're gonna create six particles. That makes all right. That's fine. What am I running for power? I have four hundred watts of solar on the roof, so that that runs me for every day. I'm good to go. You know, let's. I got four hundred watts of solar. I have two hundred amp hour lithium batteries, which are great, dude. Lithium batteries, oh, they're amazing. I can't believe we. I had a boat like 
not eight years ago and my boat had horrible old like gel batteries that sucked but lithium batteries are so dope you can use so much of their power i love it i also have a cell phone booster so like when i'm out in like remote areas i can get i can still get an, a little bit of an internet signal okay um let's see total yeah six ought to be all right for this little bit right and then we loop over them, and we're going to create each one of these particles. Let's see if we can at least get a particle created. We're choosing some random numbers. Sending random type. What's What random type is this here? M, particle, type 0. Okay. Get the bounds. Set its pause based on its bounds. What are these bounds? Bounds are x0. Oh, x1 is the, the width and the height. Gotcha that. Okay. I, I guess I would be over the total and anchors, your anchor point. Okay, that seems all right. Now, if it's rain, it does something else. If it's big, if it's distant, otherwise, just min color. Yeah, this is fine. We're setting opacities, colors, scales. Um, for a first run of this system, it seems like we've got something here that should work, right? All that's left to do is basically to hook these up so that a particle is drawing a, a voxel at a certain point when and it erases old voxel the old voxel so as the particle moves maybe it's at this point and the next tick or the next animation frame sorry the next frame we're going to be that maybe the voxels over here right so it has to erase the old voxel and then draw the new voxel that's really it's all that's left for this system but I'm happy to happy to have walked through. Let's let's see what happens when we're done with all that, right? We step through. We've got all those particles created. Let's go ahead and look at particles now and see if it actually created six of those six of those individual particles inside here. Yep, we got six of those. Each one of those is set up with certain values. Looks like the pause is somewhere between zero and fifteen or zero and forty-two. There, same here. Yeah, this looks like a healthy particle system. I'm glad that all kind of worked. So good. There you go. So that's going to be it for this stream. Um, my next steps with this engine here are going to be to make these particles visual. So I'll be able, I'll be cooking them up to the voxel engine, making that work. Um, other things I want to do, I want to get. Uh, there was a old some old camera effects I need to get going. But other than that, we'll do that next time. So. Thanks for watching the stream. Appreciate you all. It was good chatting with a lot of you guys. I'd, it's always great to chat. I'm so glad I found a cool spot I can stream in this city at least. <laughs> Some cities, dude, there's just no good internet. Yeah, have a good one, guys. We'll check you all next time.